What's up? What's up? What's up, my go getters? It is I. It is me, Adri V, the go getter. And welcome to the podcast, The G Code. I am so excited that you decided to join us on this journey of learning the pretty, the ugly, and the grind to success. And weekly, I will have my feature go getters on to share their story in the making and drop so many G codes on you about life and how they're able to be successful in their perspective careers and how you two can definitely do the same. Now, coming up this week, I have a very dope woman that you're going to enjoy in her story of perseverance, not giving up and really turning a negative into a positive or in my book, taking the lemons that life gives you and make chocolate cake and wonder how the heck did you do it? Well, she definitely did that. So um, all you got to do is stay right here and listen in for that. And while you're listening, check out the musical background, the music bed, or instrumental is provided by Droid of the Capital Music Group. Big shout out to my bro who's going to be making sure every time we got a new G code, we got some new instrumentals. So you're going to be in for a treat on that. But nonetheless, it's time for us to jump into this. Are you ready for the pretty, the ugly, and the grind to success? <laughs> Welcome to the G code. So today marks a day that I'm excited because I'm kicking off, of course, the G code. And uh, if you got a chance to hear it just a little bit ago, um, you know what the G code is all about. So, of course, when I decided to pursue creating this podcast, I really had some things in mind. First and foremost, who could really give us the dopest G codes possible when it comes to life, first and foremost. Secondly, who's going to be able to give us and reveal the pretty, the ugly, and of course the grind when it comes to pursuing something they want, or in essence, when it comes to changing a negative into a positive. So today with me, I have a wonderful woman, phenomenal woman, who definitely have done just that, and she goes by the name of Miss uh, Michelle Barron. Hey, girl. Hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy that you're here uh, because your story is one that I latched on to and I thought was one of the most amazing stories that I've heard in a while. And so before we get into it, tell the folks exactly who is Michelle Barron. Well, Michelle Barron is the founder and creator of Women in the Spotlight Going Global. But I think uh, more importantly, I am a lifelong city of Buffalo resident. I was born and raised here. I love Buffalo, Um, even the bad weather. um, (laughs) I I love Buffalo. So um, I've always, um, you know, felt like I was in a position to give back. Mm -hmm. So I worked for the city of Buffalo for 14 years in economic development. And um, I got a chance to work with a lot of small businesses throughout the city of Buffalo, particularly women. Mm -hmm. Um, That was um, always my focus, working with women. And um, worked in, you know, some of the um, some of the challenge, more challenged neighborhoods throughout the city of Buffalo. But the work was really rewarding. Yeah. So um, but fast forward, I was let go of my position. Well, I don't want to say let go. I was fired. OK. Um, they changed their mind about you. Yeah. They changed their mind about me. But it's OK. It's OK. It's OK. Uh, they changed their mind about me in August of 2009. And it was a life-changing moment for me mm-hmm. and my family. And um, But it taught me a very valuable lesson about who's on your team. Okay. Who's on your team? Who's in your boat? Who's in your boat? Who's, who's rowing with you? Who's rowing with you? In the right direction. In the right direction. Who's in your row? Um, and um, I, I think that story alone, that that's a separate interview and um i could write a book about you know as you should <clears throat> yeah as i've been told um i could write a book about that but it was a a very challenging moment for me um didn't really know how i was gonna get through it at at that particular time i found it really hard to get up in the morning and go to work and put on that face yes you know, um, and especially when you have staff that's reporting to you. I, you know, I wasn't, um, I had a, uh, a managerial position. I was the vice president of neighborhood economic development. I had staff reporting to me. So it was, it was very challenging. And I really did not know from day to day um, how I was going to get through that situation. And, I, <coughs> excuse me, I just remember saying to my 
attorney at the time that um I, you know let me quit yeah you know please just let me get out of this situation and um let me quit this this job and you know so i could just move on and move on with my life and mm -hmm. He said to me that, you know, quitting would be an admission of guilt and mm. you're not guilty. So basically, you know, you got to suck it up and get up and go to work in the morning and put your game face on. Mm -hmm. um, he was like, you know, your parents raised you better than this and you got this and, you know, you got to do this and you got to keep it moving. And you'll look back on this situation and, you know, you'll be a better person because of it but mm -hmm. at that particular time of course I didn't know that I wasn't yeah. feeling that and all I knew that I was walking into you know a situation every day that you know the fingers are being pointed at you you got news media there you got stories that are being written about you in the you know local newspapers and coverage on every news channel imaginable and having to uh, face your parents, uh -huh. you know, and to say to them that, you know, they know who you are, your family knows who you are, but when this information is being put out to the general public and um, at that time I had chose not to even speak about it. Yeah. I never went public about it. I just, you know, kind of wanted to go away quietly and just move on with my life. And so... Um, but fast forward, they fired me, and um, that year, the end of 2009, going into 2010, I created this network. Yes. Now, before we even get into the network component, mm -hmm. what I love most is that you said, you know, having to get up and put on a face. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I I know how that feels all too well mm -hmm. when you're you're like a walking zombie. You know, you're, you're putting on a face, and you know, deep down inside, you really just want to go somewhere and just not be present and so how were you able to even just push past that phase because everyone doesn't make it past that phase as we know the suicidal rate is definitely um taking a toll within this year alone and so many individuals when things are just so heavy on you like that right. and life changing some people yeah. don't have the strength or the ability to face it mm -hmm. how were you able to face that and to deal with it on a day-to-day -day? well i can honestly tell you that Prayer definitely works. It changes things, I'll tell you <laughs> it, that much. Yeah, prayer does change everything. But I just always, you know, I've always been a fighter. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just raised that way. And, you know, even when I had that one moment of weakness, you know, having that conversation with my attorney, and I remember sharing that information. I remember sharing the story with my dad. And he was like, are you nuts? Yeah. You know, like, you're not you're not quitting. That's, that's not even an option. You're going to work. And you're going to go to work every day until, you know, whatever decision is made is made. And um, it was it was not easy. Mm -hmm. It was not easy. It was difficult. Um, it was challenging. It was to face your peers. To you know, I was I walked into a situation that you know one minute you are the almost like the bell of the ball, uh -huh. and then the very next day you're stripped of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you're stripped of everything, and all you're doing is just showing up for work every day, you know, for work every day. And that's what I did. I just showed up and I, I made sure that, you know, I wasn't able to, I wasn't as effective mm -hmm. because, you know, of course they knew um, that they were going to fire me. And, um, and so a lot of things were taken away from me at that point in time. But I believe that, um, you know, prayer and my, my family, and I have an amazing group of friends uh, the same, you know, I've had these same friends since I was 14 wow, years old. Wow, that's beautiful. You know, that's rare. Right. That, that is right. such a rare, rare situation. Right. So, um, and they were always, they were always in my corner. They, they knew the situation. They knew, um, <laughs> they knew what was happening behind the scenes and, you know, they were there to support me. So that's, you know, I made it through because I have a strong foundation and I think that's really um, the message, you know, throughout my whole experience was that I did have a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. I had a great family. I had great friends. 
Um, and I had people who knew the truth. Yes. You know, and so, you know, what more can you ask for? What more can you ask for besides building a network? Mm-hmm. Now, as we fast forward and we talk about taking this negative situation, and you literally took a negative situation mm-hmm. and turned it into a positive one. And when people say that, sometimes it can be very cliche. Like, you could be like, you know, just turn it into a positive. But right. you really took that. Now, where did this network come from what was the idea of it you know how did you decide to make facebook a platform for it and what were you doing in that moment on facebook when you was like yeah i think i'll make a group like where did this come from it was crazy i was i was in school at the time so i'm sure i was like sitting at the kitchen table writing papers and i wasn't on facebook at the time really no i wasn't on facebook at the time and i was using I had my best friend's password. Hilarious. So you didn't I even would, have your own. I didn't have my own page or anything. <laughs> so I would go and get her password, um, my my best friend Tammy, and I think I had Leslie's password too. I had both of their passwords. Those and are I real would, friends. My, those, when they, yeah. When they let you into your pass, the password mm-hmm. of a Facebook social media, <laughs> those are real friends. Right. <laughs> and so that, you know, I was on Facebook and, um, and I said, you know, well, if I'm going to be on Facebook, I really want to create this group, but I want to create this group that has meaning and that I want to use it as a platform for women to share valuable information. And I know that the word empowerment is so overrated because it's people use used. it's loosely used. Mm-hmm. But I, because of my situation, I knew that I wanted to be the face of that. And I needed for them to know that this group was about being resilient and to I wanted women to feel inspired and I wanted women to feel like they could build and foster relationships with other women mm. which is not it's a rarity it's, too. it's rare it's a rarity it's not an easy thing to do and so I was sitting at my kitchen table and um, my girlfriend at the time who lives in New York City she wrote a book Mm -hmm. and I was telling her hey you need to release your book again the second edition and but now you you need to use social media because at the time when she wrote the book there was no social media media. and uh, we had this conversation about Terry McMillan she had just released her um, her new book I can't remember the name of it but she had just released a book and I was telling her that Terry McMillan was on Twitter and how she was uh, providing her followers with excerpt the excerpt of the book oh wow so and then I said hey, you know I'm gonna create this group and you know just invite women that that are quietly doing things in the community that really don't get the fanfare mm-hmm. that may not get all of the accolades may not get all of the awards you know um but these women that are really making moves in the the community yes in the trenches and i started the i created the group and i created the group with eight women now that group started off to be a very exclusive group Mm -hmm. because it was like an invite only and it still is it still is (laughs) it still is but I remember first hearing about it from my cousin. Of course, you guys went to the same hairdresser. Latima. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I was going there. I remember going there. She's like, you got to meet this lady. And I remember she's <laughs> calling me on the phone like, you got to connect with her because she got this group. And I'm going to try to connect you into the group. But I was like, what is this it's group? group right? It's like a secret society. Mm-hmm. That's what people call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it. It is a secret group on Facebook uh, for a reason. Um because I want people, I want the women in the group to feel comfortable sharing mm-hmm. information. They may share information about launching a new business. They may share information about uh, getting ideas from other women before they launch. Um, they may need professional advice. So it's not just for entrepreneurs. It's just for professional women. But we do have a large base of women that are entrepreneurs in the group and a lot of success stories. We have to talk about that because I know it it motivates me just Mm -hmm. seeing women pursue their their dreams and also just becoming entrepreneurs in that way but oh yeah absolutely and that they were that these women were able to join this group uh with at no cost gain new customers new Mm -hmm. clients um and just get everything it's 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 a one-stop shop it really is it really is a one-stop shop like before anybody 
uh, post anything outside of the group looking for assistance, they will post the question in our network first and foremost. And more than likely, nine times out of 10, somebody's going to have an answer for you and or point you in the right direction. Absolutely. So that's really what the group is. It was for all of the people, all of the women that were out there that were, again, in the trenches that... Um, that were, for lack of a better word, unsung, yep. you know, that they weren't in the spotlight, but they were doing um, amazing work, that they were, you know, either working with children, you know, that they were school counselors, principals, um, you know, work for um, employment, the Buffalo Employment and Training Center, or they were just entrepreneurs yeah. that they decided that they want to step out on fate, but they had a base. Yes. They had a base with the group. Now, with the group, you mentioned Spotlight. Where did this name come from? Because it's, it's not like a name that you just, you know, oh, this is called Women in Spotlight Going Global. Right. No, you took some thought into this. So where did this name actually come from? Well, the Women in the Spotlight, again, because I wanted to spotlight women that were doing positive things in mm-hmm. the community. So, but then I added going global because I really wanted to expand our footprint and I never thought about it as, as this group being just based here in Buffalo, New York, although this is, this is home for us because I'm here, of course. So, um, everything that we do is based out of Buffalo, but I really wanted to reach women worldwide Mm -hmm. and I wanted to give them a platform to share information and although there uh, there's a lot of groups out there there's a lot of networking groups yeah, it is. Um, we are a professional women's organization and what separates us from what a lot of other groups are doing is we have this strong facebook community yes it is i don't even know bananas. how many how many it is it's over 2200 wow over 2, started from women. eight to 2200 yeah. Yep. Wow. And I think if it would be more, I know it would be more if the group was open to the general public, mm-hmm. but I've been very strategic about the things that I do in the network. And I really, you know, I don't want to open it up to the general public because I want the women that add other women to the group to be selective about mm-hmm. who's joining yes, and to make sure that they are tied some way to our mission and vision and that they understand what the group is all about so if it was just open to the general public you would just have people randomly you know dropping dropping whatever posted dropping information or flyers and posters and the women that do that in our group right now you know there's very few that do but the women that do that in a group right now they're not if you're not engaged mm-hmm. then you're not going to receive the type of love and support and that feedback. you need from the group you i mean it it's important that you're engaged absolutely you know that's the one thing that i think is really important what we do is that you know support is a two-way street mm-hmm. And when you speak about support and you speak about um, women entrepreneurs and professionals, now let's just take it a step back because one, you get fired from this job to where you've pretty much been doing this work all your life. Mm -hmm. You create this network to now you're fostering and creating a platform for women who are now entrepreneurs, professionals, and which are creating some type of income based off of the skill set that they had. Mm -hmm. So as we look at that, what are some of the success stories that you can say that we have in WITS? And, you know, who are, not even who, but what are some of the the strongest, I'll say, tips or um, advice that has been given out that you can see people immediately implementing since it, it began? Uh, well, we have we have so many um, successful women in our in our network. Uh, the first person that comes to mind for me is Zandra. Yes. Oh, I love her products. So she's the first person that comes comes to mind. Uh, she's four. Well, now she's fifteen. She just turned, she just 15, turned fifteen yesterday. <laughs> um, but she was she is the youngest entrepreneur in our network, and I just remember meeting with her at cold blue juice bar and she was this young girl that was just she had an idea she knew what she wanted um her mom has you know she has a very uh, a great family so it wasn't like she really 
needed me, mm-hmm. you know, in a, she needed me in a different type of way, yeah. you know, just for guidance and, and reassurance. But she had a really, she has a strong base with her family. So they just needed someone to help them put the pieces of the puzzle together and starting a business, uh, whether it's a brick and mortar business or it's um, an online business, it still takes a lot of work. Absolutely, You need a business plan. You got to have a blueprint. Um, you get a lot of people that are out there that, you know, they want to expand quickly. They don't have a, a business plan. They don't have the blueprint. So they sign a lease and it's like a knee jerk reaction. Oh, I found this building. I'm signing the lease. And, you know, mm-hmm. well, I don't know where the funding's coming from and inventory and all of my overhead costs. And what does all of this mean? But I think we have women in the group that because I share that with them. Absolutely. And I share that with them because of, you know, that's my city side when I worked for the city that's the information that I would give to uh, the clients that I that I would meet with. But Xandra would be one of them. Uh, Cold Blue Juice Bar, DeChantel Lloyd. Yes. Um, you know, she went from having a brick and mortar yep. uh, business to having to make a very difficult decision to close her business, mm-hmm. which was the best thing that she could have ever done. And now she has a, a kiosk um, on the, the waterfront canal side yeah i don't know if it gets any better than this is that. true ha- you know? heavy traffic so much business down there right and they gave her a built-in structure wow you know so now you have this kiosk now you have all of this pedestrian traffic you have you know they've done all of the work so she doesn't have to sit back and and write a business plan and 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 figure out what the demographics are and who's out there and disposable income mm-hmm. they've given her all of that rolled into one and basically said you would be a great fit for what we're doing down here on Canal Side and, you know, wow. come and join us. So she's, to me, um, she is the, you know, had a business plan, you know, had everything in place, but then understood that she had to go back and retweak mm-hmm. that business plan. And sometimes you, you have to revisit your plan yes. because things change. You know, life shows up, things change in business every day. So she would be um, uh, another success story. And, we have um, Sally Cruz that just um, transitioned from her full-time job. To now, now being a full-time entrepreneur. Full-time entrepreneur. And the game is going to change for her. Yes. You know, but she's prepared. She's prepared for this moment. Uh, MND uh, Accounting with Nicole Douglas. She's based out of North Carolina. But uh, when she first joined the network, she opened her second location based on the business that she was receiving in Buffalo by way of Women in the Spotlight Go yes. Global. Yes, and so, she's awesome at what she does. So, again, it doesn't... And then there are so many other women. We have graphic designers in the group. We have photographers in the group. We have bakers um, in, in the network, uh, you know, musicians. The, all of them are just, you know, talented in their own right, and they're doing amazing work and um you know we have a lot of authors yes we i do. just wrote something um earlier today about um dr adair you know she's she's um launching her seventh book her seventh book i've seen that in the network i saw that i was really amazed yeah it's like i need to um link her how do her. you write seven books exactly you know? i mean a wealth of knowledge a wealth of a wealth of knowledge and i think that's the most important thing about the network that you know, it's a wealth of knowledge, um, a wealth of, of resources. Yes. And, you know, you just have to be smart enough to tap into, you know, what's there. And, you know, we don't care about egos. We don't care about titles. We don't, you know, you check all of that at the door and, you know, you have a, a platform to really tap into and to, um, to bond and, and get information from some really, uh, talented women and speaking throughout about, the country throughout the country absolutely because you have a chapter in, you got North Carolina in Atlanta right and it's growing 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 it's growing and yes. speaking of bonding you know what I love most is um before I even got a chance to meet you um I heard about the not I met you but then I heard about the conference 
the the brunch. brunch. Yeah, the mm-hmm. brunch, not the conference. Mm-hmm. The brunch. And I remember seeing pictures of my friends with their mom. I'm like, this is like a very like a list, very exclusive event. Why am I not there? Right. And so, you know, when you speak about bond, you speak about talented women, mm-hmm. and you bring all these women together for an mm-hmm. annual brunch. Now, first you go from you creating this network to now creating a brunch. And what made you want to take this a step further to expand and creating a brunch? Because every day we were sharing information in the group and they were asking, like, we need to get together, like, physically. Mm -hmm. You know, it was okay that we were meeting up on Facebook and sharing information on Facebook, but they really wanted to connect and, and, um, and meet up. So we decided to have our first brunch. So... Uh, that was five years ago because mm-hmm. this is our fifth year hosting the uh, annual brunch. Last year, um, we made an attempt to have our uh, annual conference. It took a lot of work. Um, I would do it again, but I would do some things differently. Mm-hmm. But um, the annual brunch is really a, a chance for women to come together once a year and to just bond. Yes. You know, it's like a in the spirit of sisterhood, <laughs> right? It is, and it's also an opportunity for for you to meet people um, the very first time because yep. a lot of these women have never met in person; mm-hmm. they only know each other by way of Facebook. Yeah, so it's a it's an opportunity to introduce yourself. Um, it is like a reunion. It, 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 really, it is. is. It really is like a you reunion. You see people. It's like, hug, huh, girl. How you been? What you been yeah. up to? It's a lot of hugs, a lot, a lot of, of talking, hugs. a lot of sharing information, a lot of, you know, updating each other on, you know, you know what's happening, you know, in your career or business. So um, it's it's a great opportunity for women to come together in the spirit of sisterhood, like that's what that day is all about that's exactly what i love most because that's exactly how i feel sisterhood you know you go from being a a networking empowerment entrepreneur business oriented professional group of women to really becoming like a digital sorority to a certain extent that's exactly (laughs) yeah yeah that's it you know and it's just like we're online connecting networking lending resources Mm -hmm. and that's exactly exactly what it is so when you developed all of this and you yourself have a wealth of knowledge Mm -hmm. you yourself have encountered a majority of all of us a part of the group Mm -hmm. and i'm sure at some point have spoken to everyone who owns a business Mm -hmm. um of course this is called the g code and when we talk about the g code the g code is all about unlocking the codes to success and throughout life we develop our own codes that we live by Mm -hmm. and you know these codes interchange sometimes through life lessons like you said you know sometimes you got to go back and look at the blueprint and look at the plan and readjust Mm -hmm. and so now where you are versus where you were and and to see where you have come from and you overcame a lot and you literally took you took the lemons that life gave you and I say make chocolate cake and they right. looking at you like how the heck did you do it mm-hmm. you know what are your now g codes that you live by and that you feel others to take into consideration whether it's just life or even pursuing business wow that's a great question the number one thing that I would that's really important to me is um, knowing who's in my circle mm-hmm. and keeping my circle small. That has always been um, something. I just live by that. I don't think you have to share everything with everybody because everybody's not ready for the things that, you know, some people just can't, they can't accept your vision. Yes. You know, sometimes your vision is so wild and crazy and sometimes you have to turn it off. I just had this conversation with someone recently about, you know, planning the annual event mm-hmm. that at some point in time I have to turn it off because my vision is so it's growing. It's so huge. Just like it's crazy. And I would be in so much debt <laughs> if I really allowed my vision to take over. So I understand that I have to do things in baby steps yes. and that I have to be really strategic about the things that I do. But I'm also strategic about uh, the information that I share with people. Mm-hmm. And everything that I do is result driven. Mm -hmm. So every year I'm looking to accomplish something, you know, that I want to see this thing grow and turn into something that, 
you know, eventually we'll take on the road. But when we take it on the road, it's going to be right. Yeah. You know, I'll have a, a corporate sponsor. Yeah. You know, it won't be based on ticket sales. It'll, it you know, it'll be based on the fact that, you know, I'll have you know, a major corporate sponsor that that believes in the mission and the vision of women in spotlight going global. And I can take the show, you know, the, what I envision for women on the road. And that, that's not to say that other women out there aren't doing great and fabulous things, mm-hmm. but you know, I just feel like what I'm doing is it's, I have my hands on it. Yeah. So it's, it's my thing. Yeah. You know, but um, I, that's just my code that I, I just, believe that you have to keep your circle small i believe that um that you have the ability to bounce back from any situation and that being resilient um having faith and believing and um making sure that the people around you uh, support what you do mm-hmm. and that they really and truly truly have your best interest at heart and that they're not on the sidelines you know giving you the side eye yeah. but they're really cheering for you because everybody's not cheering everybody for you everybody is not cheering you know, for you everybody's not cheering for you that and is the um, truth and I, I i believe that you have to be you know you have to be really uh strategic about the people that you enter into relationships with yes don't i know right? that too well you have to be really strategic <laughs> about that and and just know that you know it, it just may not be for you. It's yes. okay. You know, and, and I say that all the time. You know, I, I write that post, you know. <laughs> it's okay. It's not for it's you. It's not for you. When people leave the group, it's like, it's okay. Yeah. It's not for you. You're just taking up space for somebody else that, that really can understand and get what we're doing. Absolutely. So, um, it, you know, everything is not for everybody. And, um, and, and so I had to learn that lesson. And even with the network, you know, thinking, oh, you know. We have so many women here in Buffalo and everybody wants to be a part of it, but everybody don't, they don't want to be a part of it because they don't get it. You know, they don't get it. And it's not for me to, you know, I'm not going to beat you over the head. Right. You know, oh, well, this is the reason why you should, um, you should get it. You should get it. (laughs) This is why you should do it. This is, uh, you have a platform to share information and to uh, be engaged with, with other women. So if you don't get that part of it, then I'm not going to you know, waste my words Mm -hmm. trying to convince you that, you know, this is um, an organization that you should be a part of. So I I just think, you know, my number one G code is being resilient. Yes. You know, I I think that's, you know, that's my thing and that you can bounce back from any situation. Um, And, but you just gotta, you gotta believe and, and um, you gotta almost approach it like an athlete. You know, that's what I love about athletes. Yes. You know, because they bounce back, you know. They do. They bounce back from injuries. Injuries. You know, they bounce back, you know, when they're from losing championships. Poor LeBron. You know. Uh, Yeah, poor LeBron, (laughs) you know. um, To come so close to to, to losing. And he thought he was being strategic. Okay, I'm going back to Cleveland. I'm going to make this happen. Bring these players with me. Right. And um and then it didn't work this year. But yes. you know what? He's when he lost, I I guarantee you that it was a as bigger he, motivation. Yes, that he was thinking as he was walking off the court, I'll see those guys next year. Absolutely. You know, so that's I, I and that's the analogy that I always when I think about the things that I do, I think about it from the standpoint of an athlete. Yeah. You know, that, you know, hey, you're not, you're gonna win some, you're gonna lose some. Mm-hmm. You know, every event that we host won't be successful. But guess what? It's all about the people that's in the room. Yes. At that particular point in time. So I think that's that's what my you know, my G code is is really being resilient. Resilient. I love it. I love it. Now let the folks know how they can um know exactly what's going on with women in the spotlight going global without having to be in the network right (laughs) without having to be in a network well we have a facebook page um well we have a facebook page a general facebook page so if you like our facebook page it's women in the spotlight going global then uh, you can keep up with everything we do women in the spotlight going global if you're on social media you can follow us on twitter going global wits you can follow us on Instagram. Uh, you can follow us on Periscope. Um, and, you know, when we host events, guys are invited. Yep, you are invited, gentlemen. We don't exclude you guys. We don't exclude the gentlemen <laughs> from um, coming out and hanging out with us. And um, a lot of guys approach me about 
men in the spotlight, but I just don't think that yeah, Michelle yeah. Barron should be exactly. Um, You're a woman. Yeah, <laughs> the men in the spotlight should be the hands of men. That's you know, true. it should be something that they do. But I get approached about men in the spotlight all the time. What about the men? Yeah. And there's a lot of guys that are out here in Buffalo doing amazing. Maybe maybe at one of the things. events, you know, you can highlight a guy. I was thinking about that. That might be that might I, be I dope. I think I might do that for the annual brunch. I think that might be dope. You know, you grab one guy, you know, you are the the, the man in the spotlight today. I think I might do See? that. Yeah. Then you 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 give them exactly what they want just a little bit and maybe to motivate them and encourage them to create their own. And the thing about it is they don't have to do it the way we do it, you right. know, because they're not going to get on Facebook every day and, and sit in this group and <laughs> share information. They they're so just not going to do it. Yeah. But there are so many guys out there that's doing amazing Absolutely. Uh, work that they deserve to be acknowledged in, in some way. And they do need their own platform. But um, I'm just not the one to give yep. it to them. But maybe I'm the one to give them an award at our at our annual Absolutely. event. And give them some motivation. Yeah. That, that, That's what, that may work out. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, Michelle, I appreciate you for getting into the G-Code and sharing your codes with us. And um, your story of resiliency. It's, it's very motivating. And it just gave me an extra push on today. Really? It did. Aw. I appreciate it. That makes it. me feel good. And it should. Yeah. And I hope that um you that's listening are just as motivated as I am. And also understanding that no matter what happens to you in life, you have the ability to bounce back. So take her number one G code and put that in your in your book of codes um, so that you can unlock all your success. So um get up, get out. Definitely go get it. And keep it like right here to the G code for more of my guests the go-getters and of course me adriv the go-getter and in true fashion always welcome to the g-code